Tam Kapoon. Tam Kapoon. Maybe the best foot massage. Look at that. Wow. Oh, it's in moving. The Philippines. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, so we are in Vientiane, Lao. And we want to show you what it's like in the first 24 hours exploring the city, the capital city of Lao. So yesterday we took a flight from Hanoi to Vientiane. It was actually a really comfortable flight. Um, so we just arrived last night. And so today we're going to be exploring and seeing what Lao is like. So the first thing we're going to do, I think we're just going to go have a meal to start our day off. So this is my first time being in Lao and I have no idea what to expect. So I'm really excited. So we are actually staying in downtown Vientiane in like this foresty area of town we heard. The first thing we noticed as we're walking around is that there's not too many people out and it's a really, really quiet feeling. We're just on the hunt for a restaurant, but we noticed a lot of restaurants are closed today. So, but I think we're gonna keep looking and trying to find a place. Whew. We've been outside for like two minutes. And the sun here is hot. We put on a lot of sunscreen. I think I might pull out the umbrella. I have a feeling since the daytime, it's really hot. There isn't much activity going on in the streets. I think like at night, as the sun goes down, things are gonna get a little more exciting, but I still think we'll be able to find a good local place for lunch, hopefully. So we found the restaurant we want to go to. Uh, it has quite a few people in there, so I think it'll be good. Oh, thank you. All right, so we just sat down at a restaurant called Three Sisters. It's right close to the river. This is a local restaurant and it's packed. And so I'm not sure what we're gonna order, but we're gonna try a few different things. Are you hungry? Yeah. Appetizers, you can see they all start at just a little over a dollar. We're ordering one, two, three, four, five, six, seven things. Hi. Um, could we have one YY little soup? <laughs> it's a lot. <laughs> Yeah, you can tell we're hungry. Also, I don't know. I think food is the best introduction to a new place. I'm not sure what it's going to taste like. I've never had Lao food before. They handed us these two plates just full of veggies. There's a lot of fresh herbs and lettuce, some lime and green beans. We also have a, a chili sauce here. Dam kapun. Dam kapun. Kup chai. Oh. Yes. This is the final spread. I'm pretty sure this could feed five people or one Sarah and him. I'm going to start with coffee since it's the morning time. So this is iced milk black coffee. So I'm pretty sure they have like kind of like a dark coffee concentrate and they put condensed milk in it. I think it's going to be quite strong. Oh. Yeah, I think that condensed milk just adds such a nice, like, thickness. And what'd you get, him? So this is mango shake. Uh, I can tell they grounded the mango whole because the mango smoothie looks really thick. It's really good. It's just pure mango. They ground up the mango real nice. Um, I'll try the pork. So this is soft boiled pork and the meat looks really tender. There's a lot of herbs on top. They gave us these uh, lettuce wraps and then um, our waitress told me to dip it in this green sauce. All right, this is the bite. Mm. The pork is nice and tender and soft. This green sauce, so fresh. It looks like fried meatballs, some cabbage, and like a, looks like what a sweet and sour sauce. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice, slightly spicy, sweet, vinegary sauce, and the meatball is really tasty. So I have here some YY noodles. Um, these are broth-based noodles. I see some meatballs and some beef, and there are scallions, chopped scallions, and cilantro. Mm. Clear broth noodle soup. Mm. This is the sticky rice and it came in this package that you can hold. The sticky rice is inside, so let's open it up. It's sticky. 
Mm, pretty chewy. We waited to eat the rice so it's gotten a little hard. I think it'll go well with the meat. Mm -hmm. So we ordered another type of noodles. They called it Lao traditional noodle salad. It has some chopped cherry tomatoes, some peanuts. I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of lime juice and have a big bite. I'm sorry, I think one bite is enough for me. It has this very strong fishy flavor that I'm not really a big fan of. It's not really my type of food. Oh. Since Sing Han didn't like it, we'll see how it tastes. Mm. It's a little strong. It's definitely not my favorite, but it's okay. Um, I don't know if I'll finish the whole plate, but it's all right, it's all right. All right, we're gonna have a feast now. Out of our whole table, I think this would be probably my least favorite. I definitely think the bowl of noodles is more my type. Sian's gonna give it one more try. Take two with traditional noodles. Not for you? <laughs> Not for me. We ate about half, but everything else was really tasty. What was your favorite thing? I really like the texture of the sticky rice, and eating that with steamed pork, it was really delicious. Oh, but now we are totally stuck. Wow, what a meal. It was pretty cheap as well. It was only $8 total for all the drinks and food that we had. If you guys are in the NTN, come to this restaurant, Three Sisters Restaurant, you won't be disappointed. Kup <laughs> Jai. Kup Jai. So now that we're done with lunch, I think we're gonna go try to find a place to cool off for a bit. So I heard that Lao massages are really, really special, and they have a ton of massage places in this downtown area. We're gonna go get a massage and relax. I need to look up how to say soft. I don't do well with like hard massages. So we made it to our massage place. It was a five minute walk, but we were already soaking in sweat. Yeah, so this is called Lao Pu Thai. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correct. We saw that they have a few options for traditional like Lao massages. There's a price list. Is it Lao's traditional body massage? I think oh, that's what I want to go for. Oh, I might just do a foot massage. Yeah, and look at the description. Stretching muscles. With the use of hands and limbs. They're definitely going to beat you up. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? Yes, wish me luck. Ooh, all right, so the massage parlor is full. We made a booking for 4.30, but for now, I think we are gonna make our way to one of the biggest kind of iconic sites in Vientiane. So if you end up needing a ride from point A to point B in Vientiane or in Laos, we recommend downloading an app called Loka. Uh, this is a local ride sharing app, kind of like Grab in other Southeast Asian countries. And it is fairly cheap. We had uh, about 10, 15 minute drive that cost us 40,000 keep is around $2.50. I think we're gonna take one of the local electric tricycles. They're these vehicles you see around town. To me, they look like a mixture of like a jeepney and like a, a tuk-tuk. So it's kind of like a long tricycle. We're not really sure how much they're supposed to cost. But we'll try, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, it's not too far compared to what we drove from the airport. Maybe 30,000, 40,000. What do you say? What do you say? 100. Uh, it's okay. That's way too much. That's a lot more than what we paid from the airport to get here. I think I might just use the low cut app. That's a tuk tuk. We rode an actual car. With AC. With AC. So, another thing people sometimes do is rent their own cars or bikes around town, but we're not sure if this is the case right now. We heard there's a lot of bike scams that can happen, like motorbike scams. So that's why we didn't rent anything while we're here. Maybe we'll better luck this time. Hello. Uh, how yes. Much, how much? How much? Uh, 120,000. Uh, okay. See it in the light anyway. Uh, 18, huh? How much? Uh, 40. Uh,
is a really cool way to get around town. You'll see these on every corner. And they go pretty fast, much faster than I thought they would. Just make sure you bargain for a price before you get in so you can get a good deal. I gotta be careful with my pet because it might fly off. That's faster than I thought. Yeah. You could fit at least like five, six, seven people in here for sure. Oh, I think, I think we're almost there. Oh, I see it. Ooh, wow. So this area we're in is totally different than the downtown area we were just at. There's like all these fancy looking buildings here and flags. I think this might be more gov a government area. I think so too. So yeah. we're a little bit away from the market, the touristy area. And oh, there's the gate. Okay. Oh, the gate looks real pretty. Wow. All the right. Decorations on the top. So this is actually a war monument. And it was built in like the 1950s and early 60s to kind of commemorate the revolutionaries who fought against the French during their independence movement. We've seen a few other gates in our travels and this is one of the most lavish. So this is kind of like a centerpiece of Vientiane. As I heard you can go up to the top of it. I don't know if that's true anymore. I couldn't find any news sources. So we're gonna see if we can go inside. If not, we'll take a look on the outside. Oh, I see some vendors under the gate. Okay, let's, let's, go, let's go check it out. architecture at the top is just beautiful. All right, so we're just walking up to the monument right now. Look at that. Wow. All right, so we are right now we are inside base of the monument. We see the stairs to go up inside the tower, but they look closed off. So I don't think you can actually go inside the monument anymore, but inside is really cool as well. It actually feels kind of nice under this monument. There's also a convenience store and a bunch of like souvenir shops underneath here. I think a lot of visitors come to this place. There's these beautiful gardens around, so I think we're just going to take a look around and look at more views of the monument, and then we're going to head to get our massage. Um, yeah. Really awesome spot. So we are right outside of the Victory Gate. There's a bunch of like government buildings. We see the UN on the side. So I'm a little surprised for how big or how the touristy Patuzai is supposed to be. There weren't that many vendors or stalls. There were a few right under the Patuzai, but other than that, there's nothing much in the surrounding areas. So they have bus stops around town. So I think there's definitely a little bit of public transportation. We are right here. Yeah, it looks like you can actually take a bus out to the airport too. This area is the city center and then you can see some other of the major highlights around town. But we're just going to take the Loka app. It says it's charging us 45000 which is a little less than what we paid for getting to Patuzai. Here's our driver. Actually, I think that's him right behind you. Thank you. Oh, it's a really nice car. Air conditioned. It's really good. <laughs> All right, we made it back across town. Now we're gonna go get our massage, so. All right, so we just got in the shop and it's so cool in here. I like that we sat down and they gave us ice cold water to start. It's a good way to start the massage. Singhan's gonna look up how to ask to go a little softer because I think it's gonna be real intense. I cannot pronounce it, it's, it's this. So I'll just show them this picture. <laughs> it costs a hundred thousand to keep, which is not bad. See how we like it. Oh, it's a nice scrub. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So this is the chair. I'm just gonna sit down now for my foot massage. There's a pretty flower here. So I got changed into this t-shirt and shorts. They smell really nice and clean. I think this is the massage clothes that you have to wear before you get the full body massage. It's nice and quiet in here.
Meanwhile. Body massage was really good. She had a really good thumb strength. They use body weight on you. They go really full force in getting your muscles relaxed. And I didn't expect this, but they also did head massage and your hand massage as well. Hi. <laughs> you should definitely come here if you come to Laos. That was maybe the best foot massage I've ever had. <laughs> that hour went by so fast. I, the only thing I wish is I got a longer massage. So I felt bad in the beginning because I was really hot and she, she was massaging my calves a little bit. My legs are the first place that I get sweaty and this poor girl probably had to wipe her hands a little bit because it was just wet in the very beginning. And for six dollars, that was awesome. I was talking to some of the workers. They gave me so many tips for like Lao oh, yeah? and like where to go. So it was really cool. So now we are gonna walk back towards the riverside. Sound good? Sounds good. One thing I noticed is town is just filled with all of these gorgeous temples. I mean, just look behind me. There's like an interesting blend of a few French style buildings, but then there's these gorgeous temples. And a lot of them have the reddish orange roofs. We've already walked by three today. And, um, we haven't actually gone into any of the temples. And I think that's another popular thing to do in town, but we don't have time today. So we've noticed that um, around town, not too many people speak a lot of English, but I love to kind of share and talk a little bit with you, so asking what do we think of Lao. We tried to learn a little bit of like greetings, like in every country we try to do that. And I think it goes a long way. You can tell they appreciate you when you try to speak their language. I only know the word thank you. <laughs> then it's gone down a little bit and it has made a huge difference in the temperature. And you can see people setting up tents for food and tables and such. We found out there are these food stalls here on the other side of the market. But we're not hungry right now, but maybe in an hour we might come back to get some dinner. Coconut looks good. We're gonna have to come out tomorrow and try to find some street food. So <laughs> We are crossing the street over towards the riverside. There are so many motorbikes here. This must be the place to hang out at night. That's actually Thailand. Vientiane is right on the border between Laos and Thailand. And you can see Thailand across the river. I don't see many boats out, but there are so many people out here at this like long walking path along the river. And right behind Singhan is a night market. And there's like a horse, a horse rink right there. Gonna walk a little along the waterfront here, but this is the place to be. There's so many families around, and there's a lot going on right at the edge of the river. There's so many motorbikes, there's like carnivals, they have like intense dubstep in the carnival. I don't quite know why. Hey guys, we're back and we want to show you the markets in Vientiane. These are the markets that are real close up to the Mekong River. I don't think we're looking to buy any type of clothing, but just want to look. It is really crowded in here and there's so many stalls. It seems to stretch really far along both sides. We're right in front of the carnival where we were earlier. I think they sell a lot of the similar stuff. T-shirts, sneakers, accessories, sunglasses and phone cases. Let's go have a look. Hey, they have the Adidas hat that we lost in Langkawi. <gasps> no, that's what we love. I mean, where was it? Um, Kota Kinabalu. Oh. Okay, so we just walked through the market and now we are back at the side with all the food. Chicken feet. 
I'm not a huge fan of chicken feet. I've had it before, but it's not my favorite. Mm. I'm seeing a lot of seafood. Aren't we a little far away from the ocean? Yeah, I don't know. I'm also seeing a lot of skewers. It seems like skewer meat seems to be a thing. I think every stall we just passed was mostly different types of skewers. I think that's a popular thing to eat. We're not really in the mood for like meat or skewers, so we're gonna keep looking around. I also saw sushi, but I don't think I would trust sushi from the street. Oh, I'm smelling that oh. fermented <laughs> fish smell. Hey, come here. Ooh. Would you get some dessert with me? Yeah, I would totally eat dessert with you. I have a mix of banana, black bean. Yeah. Ice. Uh, yes, yes, please. Uh, how much? Uh, 15,000. 15? 15. 15. One five. Thank you. Yeah. Table over there. All right, this looks really good. I picked the stuff that the lady in front of me picked. So we got different jellies, we got banana, but they were brown, and we got uh, black bean. And it puts sugar and milk and syrup and other stuff in it. Mm. Oh my gosh, oh yeah. I love this. It tastes like cereal milk. I will say, one thing that Southeast Asia does really well is ice desserts. I love them all. This is so good. Mm. I love the bananas. The bananas don't taste sweet because you have a scoop full of syrup and other sweet jellies, but it adds like a really nice texture. Really good. It is, yeah. And I think that one jello that we got is actually rice cake. Can I have this one? Thank you. Hey, look at my eggs. You got an egg. Oh man, so if this is what I think it is, this is a half-grown duck egg. It's not that hot. It's kind of lukewarm. Oh. All right, juice came out. I'll just open it like this, I guess. Oh. It's an egg. It's a half, uh, half uh, developed. Half developed egg. Oh, are these like beans? Oh, okay. It sort of looks like an egg, but the shells are a little different. It's starting to develop these veins. It's, oh, it's, it's moving. Philippines. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> In the Philippines, this is called balut. And we avoided it. We didn't need it last time. So I guess now you have your... Uh, what, what did you say this was called? Balut? That's, that's a Filipino word. Oh, half-grown duck. It looks all right. I mean, we eat duck, we eat eggs. Why not eat half duck eggs? Oh, I taste the beak. Really? No. <laughs> <laughs> Just tastes like eggs. But there are bits of chewy pieces that I think it's sort of meat, but not quite. Mm. You know how in regular eggs there's the yellow yolk part and the white part? This one, I would say there are three types. The white and the yolk and some organs, kind of half grown organs. But they don't taste fishy at all. It just tastes like regular eggs, but a little bit of a um, chewy texture in the middle. It might not have been the most visually appealing food, but taste-wise, it tastes pretty good. I actually saw this guy across from us eating it, so it got me curious to try one. And I'm glad I did because I was really curious. And now we're going to go, and I think we're going to call it a night. Can I go home? Huh? in downtown Vientiane, like, of course now there's roosters and a saw. So what's the plan now, Singhan? Oh. The plan is, I don't have a plan. <laughs> Hi, kitty. Yeah. Oh, he didn't like me. Yeah, we made friends with this cat the other day. Look at him, sound the sleep. Yeah. We fed him so much chicken.
<laughs> that was so fast, buddy.